Tonight on CTV News, Christchurch's plea for more Chinese flights are ignored by the government. Elderly protesters make their anger known about more insurance delays. And the legal high debate continues. Broadcasting across Canterbury. From the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening and welcome to CTV News. I'm Emma Cropper. Twice as many flights will soon be flying between China and New Zealand. But despite considerable government lobbying from Canterbury Tourism, Christchurch will miss out on nearly all of them. Here's more on the story. Chinese tourists are flooding the South Island, but the government's plans to expand that market have ignored the large boost in Chinese travellers. Minister of Transport Simon Bridges announced a deal that will double trips between China and New Zealand. 1,100 flights will now travel return to Auckland, with Christchurch only receiving an extra two each year. Tim Hunter, the chief executive of Christchurch and Canterbury Tourism, is disappointed with the move. We completely understand that it was probably timely to increase the amount of capacity in the air service agreements between the two countries. I suppose the only issue we have with it is uh, all of it seems to be planned to go to Auckland and none of it to the South Island. The head of Canterbury Tourism has been lobbying for a direct path between China and Christchurch for some time. A chartered flight from Guangzhou to Christchurch landed at the airport over the Chinese New Year. Under the new agreement, three direct flights will now make their way into the city at that time. We have three uh, charter flights in February, which is great news around Chinese New Year. But you know, at the same time, Auckland has 1,100 flights a year. Uh, we'd, like to get, we'd like to get a good share of those. But as Auckland's hogging all the flights, it comes as a huge blow for South Island and Canterbury tourism. Following a 50% boost in Chinese travellers in the past year, a reflection of how attractive the South Island is to international visitors. We've seen enormous growth in the China market, particularly in the last two years, and seen a lot of high value tourism from China, with people instead of being on cheap shopping bus tours are actually self-driving and staying 10 to 11 nights. It's just the sort of tourist we want. Minister Bridges says the doubling of air services capacity represents another step in expanding tourism, trade and personal ties between the two countries. But Hunter believes it's likely the new travel arrangement could see tourists skip this part of the country altogether. A lot of them will go straight to Queenstown and they'll overfly Canterbury and that's where we could suffer a significant loss in the long term if we don't have those direct air connections direct from China. Under the amended services agreement, 42 trips will now commute between the two countries a week, up from just 21. But Hunter believes the decision is an oversight to where Chinese travellers are actually spending their time in the country. And they probably do their assessment from the point of view of uh, New Zealand being a point of sale rather than looking at the tourism dynamics which show that the South Island is increasing in popularity and increasing in the number of visitor nights that we have here. Minister Bridges says the amended air services agreement is a further reflection of the growing depth of New Zealand and China's strong relationship. Hunter still hopeful that relationship will in time give travellers the chance to fly directly into the city from China. Emma Cropper, CTV News. They're some of the first to volunteer to help in their communities and tonight 24 local heroes are being honoured for their work. Marcus Gibbs explains. As part of the New Zealander of the Year Awards, 24 local heroes will be presented with awards tonight at a special medal presentation ceremony at Addington Raceway. Some of those being featured have received media attention in the past for their efforts. Brent Kens is a local hero who, despite being red zoned, has stayed put. The organisers of the awards say he could be almost called a professional volunteer in the Kaipoi community. For the past 10 years, he's been a volunteer firefighter with the New Zealand Fire Service a volunteer ambulance officer with St John and a spokesperson and advocate for WeCan. In Christchurch, two supporters of Phillipstown School are both receiving awards. The education minister is shutting down the school, but Dr Chris Gallivan campaigned along with Wayne Hawker to keep it running. Dr Gallivan is New Zealand's youngest dean of law and is based at the Canterbury University Law School. Over the last two years, Chris has visited more than 80 schools to encourage students to find their passion community, meaning and responsibility. On the international stage, Chris is also helping to set up a clinical program in East Timor, supported by the United Nations Development Program. 
Meanwhile, Wayne Hawker is a Phillipstown community advocate. He's been serving his community for more than 35 years. He's helped fundraise more than $300,000 for the children of Phillipstown and is a board member and chair on a number of trusts, boards and clubs. He also controversially campaigned to shut down an illegal brothel in his street. Artist Tipathy Valentine led the creation of the Temple for Christchurch last year. A community mental health project, this temple was designed to represent the seismic waveforms of the February 2011 earthquake. The installation stood for nine days where people were invited to write their earthquake experiences on the walls of the temple. It was then transported out of the city and set on fire as a way to release the negative experiences. This project took two years to complete as Hippothy sourced wood from demolitions around the city. Brian Fairbairn and his wife Colleen are the Christchurch Red Zone's guardian angels. Originally from Avonside, the retired couple was saddened to see the old suburb becoming overgrown following the quake's mass evacuation and decided to do something about it. For a year now, the couple has been heading to the Red Zone to weed, mow, prune and trim, with all costs coming out of their own pocket. Finally, Peter Townsend has been recognised for his work as the Chief Executive of the Canterbury Employers Chamber of Commerce for the last 18 years. Peter also holds several corporate directorships and has been actively involved in earthquake recovery issues at both a local, national and international level. He's also the honorary consul for Chile in the South Island. These people are just a selection of the 24 that will be honoured with awards tonight. They are Christchurch's local heroes. More than a dozen frustrated Cantabrians protested against Tower Insurance today as they fought to raise awareness of the toll the rebuild is taking on the elderly. Marcus Gibbs has more on the story. After close to four long, hard years, Eileen Pierce is fed up. Particularly this year has been the hardest, I think. I think I'm getting worn down a bit with it. The 83-year-old is determined her earthquake-damaged New Brighton home is a rebuild. But Tower Insurance says it's only a repair. I just want the, uh, insurance companies to honour their policy to people. This protest, a last-ditch effort to sway the insurer. It's not four weeks after the earthquake, it's not four months. This lady has been living in her house for four years. She can't close the back door. She turns the tap on, sand comes out of the tap. Is this right? Is this what how we want to treat our elderly? More than a dozen people joined Mrs Pierce for the protest, including her local city councillor, Glenn Livingston. It's a real boost. You know, you're on your own for so long fighting this and to know that people are going either they're just sticking up for you believe in what you're doing brian staples company earthquake services is representing mrs pierce and has been leading the charge in the courtroom over the last 18 months but they listen to me they really listen to me and that's the biggest thing. The earthquakes cracked the ceilings, walls and foundations of Eileen Pierce's home. But Tower is adamant. This home isn't a rebuild, it's a repair. They know it's their own information that tells them it's a rebuild. But their own information tells them there is no good ground for 16 metres under her house. They want to rely on jacking and packing piles onto sand. Tower says the 1970s home would only cost $317,000 to repair or $445,000 to rebuild. But Brian Staples says his engineers believe Mrs Pierce should get between $780,000 and $900,000. Do you think that's uh, justified for a rebuild? Or? Absolutely. You know, we've settled so many claims around her house now. Um, because of the conditions of the land, we've settled claims the same size as her house for 800000 850000 So it's not about the dollars. It's about it'll cost whatever it costs to repair that house to an as-new condition. Her case is set for the High Court next year, but Brian says most of his clients settle with their insurance company out of court. In most cases, his company stands to make a 10% cut of any uplift in the final settlement. However, he preferred not to comment on how much his company will make on Eileen's claim. How many other elderly cases do you have? Who knows, 100, 200? But there's a lot. There's thousands in this situation. And it's not just elderly, it's the vulnerable as well. An advocate for the elderly recently sent a letter to the heads of the insurance companies pleading for action and saying that people are dying before their homes are rebuilt. Eileen Pierce says the elderly are too scared to speak out. There's a lot of people out there. It's not just me. 
It is not. And I'm speaking for all people my age. In a statement today, Tower Insurance says the company has settled 89% of its claims and is disappointed Mrs Pierce's case has reached this stage. The company says they have been hoping for some time to proceed with the repairs to her house and have offered to enter into independent mediation to resolve the issues. I don't like their attitude. Why couldn't they come and tell me myself to my face? Have you heard any offers from, for meetings from them? I haven't heard from them for at least two years. If an agreement can't be reached, Tower will face off against Brian and Eileen in the High Court next May. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Plans for the new intersection by the Christchurch Airport will help ease traffic congestion, but there's a mystery surrounding the roadworks. The airport's hoping to get in contact with the family connected to this white cross. The unmarked memorial is located at the end of the airport runway on Pound Road. The airport has had no luck in finding the family associated to the landmark, but are hoping to do so before construction on the intersection begins. The airport is calling for anyone who knows anything about the cross to contact them. Still to come, the legal high debate is back on the table and a local documentary is shortlisted for an international award. In Good Shape, examining all aspects of healthcare, medicine, research, nutrition, fitness and beauty with in-depth interviews from medical experts. It's all here on In Good Shape, Tuesday morning at 9.30 CTV. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. At Stay Well Pharmacy we do more than just dispense prescriptions. If you're looking for a new perspective on your health options from a qualified health professional, then come in and see us. We have two private consultation rooms where you can discuss your health needs with our team and confidence. We combine the best of the health food shop and a pharmacy to give you a holistic approach. For a new direction in your future health, call us for an appointment. Stay Well Pharmacy. Live well, stay well. Located at the foot of the Port Hills, Berrymead Golf offers a spectacular location for any occasion. Make a dream wedding a reality with private use of our green function room, outdoor garden courtyard, large marquee and stunning gazebo. Or for your next conference, enjoy the relaxed atmosphere of Berrymead Golf, offering a private, spacious conference room with special deals to make any break a true break. All with customised catering from the WOW Cafe. Berrymead Golf, 50 Berrymead Park Drive, right next to the Berrymead Heritage Park. Looking for that perfect gift for a loved one? Wanting to add some vibrance to your home? Or just looking to brighten up your workplace? No matter the occasion, the Hitching Post has something for everyone. Lose yourself in their extensive range of homeware, art, glass and plasma cut metal work. The Hitching Post is your one-stop shop for great style and quality. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. is pure football heaven featuring all the games, the goals, the interviews and the stats. Kickoff Sunday at 1:30 p.m. right here on CTV. Welcome back. In a bid to keep a closer watch on R18 shops, the Christchurch City Council will decide tomorrow on whether some legal highs can be sold and where hoping to restrict them to the CBD and separate them from schools and public areas. Do you think they should restrict where they're opening or...? Yeah. Yeah? Why is that? They're bad. Yes. Why is that? Um, because uh, uh, you shouldn't have it near um, where children are because I think that um, it's too much temptation for them and I think it's, it's just not right, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think legal highs are really good. Thing, so yeah, I don't know actually. Yes. Sorry, that's what are your thoughts on legal highs? Um, they seem like they're quite damaging for people. That's not a good idea. Not a good idea. No. Why, is that? Why should we 
be um, promoting or like encouraging people to have to go on hires and things like that. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, Maybe so you'd like to see the shops gone completely? Yeah. Yep. No, just take them all away. We don't need them. Of course, there's too many problems. What are your thoughts on it? I'm exactly the same way. Ban the things all together. Why, I mean, why legalise something that, you, you know, you can't get naturally? Timaru hasn't avoided property value increases, with new figures showing farm properties are leading the way. Latest government figures show Timaru property values over the last three years have jumped 35%, with residential properties increasing 13%. By far, the biggest increases are in farmland values increasing on average nearly 42%. The average house price is now worth 292000 with a section selling for 113000 The flip side of these increases is that July 1st next year, rates will also increase accordingly. The updated valuations will be posted out to property owners next month, who will have until the end of January to object. Mid-Canterbury moviegoers will, from this week, be able to see the same Hollywood films as shown in larger centres, thanks to a new upgrade at Methvin Cinema. Methvin's Cinema Paradiso will this week become Mid-Canterbury's second rural cinema to show blockbuster movies, thanks to a $75,000 upgrade and state-of-the-art projector. The upgrade includes new technology, which will allow the cinema to show newly released Hollywood films. Planning is also underway for opening screenings to be shown at national and international opening dates. The cinema's first midnight screening will broadcast next month. A documentary about the Christchurch rebuild has made the shortlist for an international award. Here's more on the story. Shortlisted for innovation, the Christchurch City Council is making its mark on the international stage. The Guanjal International Award for Urban Innovation has chosen Christchurch, our ever-evolving city initiative, as one of the top 15 innovative ideas. When we're rebuilding Christchurch, it's important that we build in this factor of resilience into the buildings, so they can easily be repaired or not damaged through future events to keep Christchurch going as a uh, capital of the South Island. It's a five-part documentary series, each with a different theme, showcasing the highlights and developments in Christchurch post-quake. Showing the spirit and determination of the people of Christchurch as they undertake the rebuild of the city. There's so much grassroots stuff going on in Christchurch and I think, yeah, definitely the rebuild is coming from the people. The Guanjal Award aims to reward innovations to improve the socio-economic environments in cities and regions, promote sustainability and advance the livelihood of citizens. The council was chosen from a total of 209 initiatives submitted from 159 cities in 55 countries. There's a huge amount of work going on at the moment and you can see the potential that everything has. Through the Christchurch's Share an Idea initiative, locals submitted 106,000 ideas for the development of the central city. The central city's blueprint, a design vision for a livable, vibrant and prosperous city, is beginning to take shape. So the people of Christchurch said, hey, we want a compact city, we want a green city, we want a distinctive city, we want a great city to live in, to work in, to visit and to play, and we want an accessible city. Christchurch Mayor Leanne Dalzell says being innovative and trying new ways of doing things is what the council strives for. She believes being shortlisted in a competitive field reflects the high calibre, standard of work and commitment of council staff. Lego could soon be making a massive revival in Christchurch as a team work to build a massive centre for anyone to bring their creations to life using the colourful bricks. Dr Christoph Bartnick is undertaking the biggest Lego challenge of his life. He's building a large centre for both children and adults alike, where people can come and play with Lego. His vision is catching on. Christchurch City Council has agreed to spend $35,000 to help set up what has already been branded as the Imagination Station. $21,000 has been spent on 360 kgs of Lego, and it's on its way to Christchurch. The administrators will charge 
encourage a donation for people to come and play, and it should be up and running inside Cathedral Junction by the middle of December. Christoph says it will be a fun reason for people to come into the central city. He says there's no such opportunity anywhere else in New Zealand, and it will provide a much needed psychological boost to families and an opportunity to meet and mingle. Everyone knows Lego. This team wants to create an awesome space for kids, and during school hours, the Imagination Station may be run as an educational facility, open from 10 in the morning to 6 at night every day. The group hopes to stay open for a year initially, but extra funding will keep the Imagination Station running. Still to come, your region's weather. Kids Television is right here on CTV. With an exciting range of kids programming, join in on all the fun, Saturday 7am to 8.30am, right here on CTV. Blackwalls has a proud history presenting leading vehicle brands, extensive backup and service for a total one-stop driving experience. Holden, Mazda and HSV new and used vehicle sales, servicing, parts, paint and panel, Isuzu truck sales and service, all together in one convenient location. More selection, more value, more quality and more reasons to make Blackwalls your number one choice. Visit Blackwalls today, call the Waterloo Racecourse Road, Sockburn or online at blackwalls.co.nz. Undergone home renovations? Looking for that special something to complete a room? Look no further than the Hitching Post. Their extensive range ensures you can find that special something. From plasma cut metalwork, to candles, artwork, weather vanes, or even a customised gate. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake Repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! <laughs> Hi, I'm Jude Kirk. Join me weekdays for Let's Go Shopping. Here in Canterbury, who cares what Aucklanders think? Well, it turns out 45,000 of us do. A new video on YouTube asking Aucklanders for their thoughts on Christchurch has attracted thousands of online views. Marcus Gibbs reports on how close perception is to reality. Christchurch, an earthquake ravaged city, destroyed and abandoned. Who on earth would want to visit? Well, that's one perception out there, but a new video featuring a group of Aucklanders and their opinions on the place hopes to change it. So before they even visit the Garden City, what do they think of the place? They're still in a bit of a state of disrepair. There's probably not a lot to do down there. It's pretty messed up. Yeah, from all the news we hear, it sounds like a pretty sad place to be at the moment. I don't know, just shaken and broken. Former All Black Andy Ellis takes them on a tour of the city and after hours of jet boating and swinging from the treetops, a game of cricket on the new Hagley Oval and good food and drink, they have completely changed their minds. I was thinking about the South Island and or New Zealand, where I was going to go for a holiday. Christchurch probably it wasn't really in the top five. Now that I've kind of had a little taste, uh, I'd definitely be keen to come back. <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, it's, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I have, and it's been a, a great trip. I came down here with mixed feelings, and yeah, I've come away, and I definitely recommend it for New Zealanders. Come down here now, and it's only going to get better over the next few years. So how do the Aucklanders' perceptions of the city match up to what the locals think? 
It's devastating and really horrible to see. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, awesome about it? Uh, the beaches, the waves, yeah, and all the all the new new development that's happening. Oh, it's all quite different, I suppose. Town's still sort of no one really goes in there much, I don't think, because it's all just getting built again. It's great, I love it here. It's all a bit of a mess when you drive through there. Yeah, it's not until I drive to the east side that I realise how it's a bit hard on other people over here. It's an awesome place, it's close to everything, it's got heaps to do, do around, uh, as long as you enjoy the outdoors. A bit bumpy at the moment, yeah. There's nothing to do really, but other than that it's quite nice. The buildings and stuff that they've redone are really nice, like the container mall, that's cool. It's a good place for a holiday. So there you have it, a mix of views and some of the people we spoke to seem to share the same views of the Aucklanders before they visited Christchurch. However, Aucklanders and most of the locals highlighted Christchurch as a great place for a holiday, as long as you think outside of the square. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Time now for your region's weather. Timanu had 25 degrees, Tamuka and Geraldine a high of 24. Methven and Ashburton had a warm high of 25, same for Uruclaya on 25 degrees. Darfield 25 degrees, Leeston and Rolleston reached a high of 27 degrees today. Looking at Lincoln and Christchurch, a warm day for you with 27 degrees. And over in Akaroa, reaching the region's high today of 28 degrees. Heading north, Rangiora Kaipui and Amberley hit a high of 27. Further north in Culverden, Hamra Springs and Shevia, they all had the region's low of 24 degrees. And at the top in Kaikoura, 25 for you today. Let's take a look at the weather for Thursday. Timaru, lots of sunshine and plenty of northwesterly breezes for your Thursday. Tonight's low 13 degrees, tomorrow's high 25. Ashburton, a summery feel tomorrow in mid-Canterbury with warm temperatures, clear skies and gusty northwesterlies. Tonight's low 13, tomorrow's high 25. Enjoy a fine warm Thursday in the Garden City too with breezy northwesterlies. Tonight's low 13 degrees, tomorrow's high 27. Up in Kaikoura, clear skies and strong gusty northwesterlies will bring warm temperatures too. Tonight's low 13, tomorrow's high a nice 27 degrees. Let's take a look at other areas around the region. Tamuka and Geraldine can expect a high of 25 degrees. Methven fine with a high of 27 and Rakaia slightly cooler with 25 degrees. Looking at Lincoln, expect a low of 13 and a high of 27. Over in Akaroa, fine for most parts of the day with a high of 27 degrees. Kaipui and Amberley fine weather throughout the day with a high of 27. Colvin and Hanra Springs fine weather with an overnight low of 13 degrees. Let's take a look at what's expected to come Canterbury's way weather-wise for the rest of the week. Mild northwesterlies and high cloud at first on Friday, but colder moderate southwesterlies developing during the afternoon with a period of showers clearing later on Friday night. Dry for much of Saturday with some cloud and light winds, but colder, moderate southerly winds developing late in the day with a few showers possible during the evening. So you may want to wrap up if you are heading to Christmas in the park. Mostly dry and cloudy on Sunday and light northeasterlies, but showers and cold southerly winds developing from evening. Cloudy on Monday and Tuesday with a few scattered light showers at times. Clearing later on Tuesday, cold with moderate southerly winds. And that's your region's weather for Wednesday. Have a great evening. And that's CTV News for Wednesday. Have a good night.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.